the final talk for today uh, will be by also by a team of colleagues um, by M. H. Seidelberger. Um, he was the former deputy of the Institute for Safety and Risk Sciences at the BOKU in Vienna. He worked also 12 years as a reactor engineer at Siemens, and uh, he worked uh, also in the field of emergency cooling systems. Um, and since 2013, he is an independent consultant. Uh, and uh, his colleague, uh, Dr. Georgi Kastjev, is a nuclear physicist and was a research associate at the Institute for Safety and Risk Sciences at the BOKU uh, until his retirement. Uh, prior to that, he worked for 17 years at the Bulgarian nuclear power plant uh, Kostildov uh, and was then head of the Nuclear Regulatory Authority in Bulgaria. Uh, both are members of INRAC. Uh, thank you very much for being here, and uh, we enjoy your talk. And I give the microphone over to you. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Matthias. I will start. Uh, organizers, please show the presentation. Mm. I cannot see the presentation. Okay. No, no, you, I will just say, please, next slide, and you will. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. First slide, please. First slide. First slide, please. Okay. Uh, the topic is aging of uh, VVR reactors. What does it mean? VVR means water-water uh, uh, energetic reactor. This is Russian abbreviation. Abbreviation. This is uh, this type of reactors are very similar to Western PWURs. The only major difference is that they use horizontal type steam generators. The design of fuel is uh, different, of course, and uh, uh, some other differences not so important. Uh, as uh, other countries, in Western countries, the Russians started with the development of uh, small and medium-sized <coughs> white water reactors. And first they developed uh, several prototypes, 70 megawatt, 200, 10 megawatts, 365, 417 megawatts. And finally, they reached standardized uh, design of the first generation reactor with capacity of 440 megawatt electrical. And uh, it was called model V230. This is typical design of uh, first generation reactors uh, with uh, abnormal let's say, big number of uh, cooling loops. It has six cooling loops with, uh, with uh, horizontal steam generators and uh, not proper design of uh, safety systems with uh, no redundant trains, no, no clear separation. The previous, previous slide, please, previous. Slide number two, please. Okay. And the nuclear steam supply system is placed in a, a so-called box of steam generators, which is with very thick walls, but uh, with very limited volume. And the reactor is protected only by the uh, uh, cover. Uh, otherwise, the reactor building is a typical industrial building with typical roof and uh, walls, not protective against uh, uh, crash of air plan or, uh, or, or uh, seismic events, etc. <laughs> Next slide, please. Uh, the development of uh, Russian nuclear program uh, was continued with the development of second generation of these middle medium-sized reactors with the same capacity. The model was called 213, 213. Uh, 
in this design of directors, the Russians put already a full set of passive accumulators and uh, three trains, uh, active core cooling systems with proper separation, etc. And in addition, trying to compensate the lack of uh, containment structure, they put so-called localization tower for each unit. This localization tower is designed with number of uh, pools in which, in case of rupture of uh, uh, main column pipe, the steam could, could condense in this uh, uh, pools. Uh, again, the reactor building itself is uh, usual industrial building, not uh, protected against the crash of a relatively heavy airplane. Um, next slide, please. This, uh, this uh, design was accomplished in uh, 70s. It means uh, some, some 50 years ago, 16 units were constructed and put in operation in Russia, in Ukraine, in the Hungary, Czech Republic, uh, uh, Slovakia. Um, and uh, 14 of them are running uh, beyond their additional design life, which is uh, 30 years. As relatively old design, there are a, a number of major design shortcomings. For example, first of all, this is a lack of full pressure containment structure. Instead, there is a confinement uh, and uh, spent fuel tool and the pressurizer are outside, even outside of this confinement stru uh, structure. Uh, high energy lines, which includes uh, steam lines and uh, feed water lines are not properly separated. There is, uh, there are near to each other, so break of one could result in uh, uh, damage of others. Due to the special design of director core, insertion, insertion time of neutron absorbers is high. It's 10 to 12 seconds. And in the reactors of third generation, this is only three to four seconds. There is a big amount of zirconium in the reactor core, also due to the special design of fuel assemblies with the hexagonal zirconium shroud. Uh, due to the relatively small diameter of the reactor pressure vessel and small gap between the vessel and the reactor core, that there is uh, accelerated uh, embrittlement of reactor pressure vessel. The leak tightness of confinement is uh, poor, and they are designed as twin units to share uh, 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 subsystems and uh, common turbine hull. And there is a risk of uh, that uh, the main control room could be damaged by uh, turbine missiles. Next, please. Um, in addition, for this, from this design. Two units were constructed in Finland, but they were modernized at the very early stage. And the main modernization measure was that they uh, uh, put containment structure, as you can see on the slide. Next slide, please. Uh, the development of the Russian um, nuclear program continues with, uh, next please. Ah, so it's okay, no, 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 previous, previous. Yeah. Previous slide, please. Okay. Uh, all units of this design was were operated with the thermal power increased to even up to 109%. They accomplished periodic re safety review every 10 years, which is reviewed by uh, regulators. Licensing period, however, is different. As a rule, 10 years, but in 120 years, and in one country, even not limited. There is the intention of all operators to uh, operate these units 50 to 60 years. The main modernization measure applied 
is the uh, so-called concept in vessel core melt extension. And my colleague, uh, Mr. Zadia Berger, will, will speak about this. Post Fukushima measures, of course, implemented. What is uh, here interesting is that uh, soon we expect uh, mock of C units three and four of the same design to be put in operation. And uh, regrettably, for many decades, there is a severe accident in Europe will be dominated by this uh, uh, mock of units three and four. So as Nikolaus mentioned, in the future, we will be forced to leave with the risk for the present, <clears throat> present reactors, risks that are not acceptable for the new reactors. Next, please. <clears throat> okay, so development of Russian um, nuclear program continued with the development of design of 1,000 class reactors. First of them, this was model V320. Uh, this reactor with four cooling, cooling loops uh, that is placed in the full containment structure. What is uh, very specific for this design that the reactor pressure vessel is well above the ground, about 13 meters. The, the bottom of the containment is about 13 meters above the ground. Uh, they started with several prototypes, uh, and finally, 30 units of uh, uh, this design were constructed and now in operation, mainly in Russia and Ukraine, two in Czech Republic, two in Bulgaria. Design WAF is again 30 years. 17 units are running after this uh, design, initial design life, and several are approaching. Next, please. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> all of these units were operated and thermal power increased to 104, 107%. Uh, the fuel design was optimized for some reactors. There is a transfer for fuel cycle from 20 months to 18 months. Post Fukushima measures, of course, implemented periodic safety review every 10 years licensing period 10 years or 20 years, and uh, all operators expect to operate them up to 60 years. Next, please. Um, what is uh, typical for, for, for these reactors design in second half of 17th? Um, we can see that uh, features of third generation reactors like double containment structure or core catcher or long-term cooling system, it's not possible to, um, no possibility to construct this feature for the existing reactors. What does it mean? Uh, if you have double containment structure, you are better protected against the crash of, crash of um, uh, relatively heavy airplane, uh, they can uh, place additional uh, water tanks uh, in the top of the containment structure and to, to place additional heat exchangers for long-term cooling. What does it mean? A lack of core catcher was demonstrated at Fukushima reactors in which they even don't know where is the solidified core melt and they still have to inject about 400 uh, cubic meters per day in these three reactors, trying to um, trying to uh, to cool the, the debris. So, um, what is also typical for for these uh, 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 operators, as a rule, no environmental impact assessment accomplished for significant lifetime in extensions. Um, there is a, uh, uh, to say, uh, uh, in some countries, all these measures were, were delayed due to lack of money. Typical example is Ukraine. And uh, we can say that some companies and uh, countries are 
real plans to construct final um, geological repository for the spent fuel. So uh, this is a problem which will be more and more uh, important for the Europe and uh, for the whole world. So uh, that's my uh, uh, my part. Now I will put the floor to, to my colleague, Emery. To my... Okay, okay, thank you very much for the moderator. Yeah, my task is uh, to go into some details concerning, please, the next slide. Yeah, I will talk about uh, severe accident management approach for Russian VBR reactors. Uh, and to explain the, yeah, the situation, which is not only specific for VBRs, but for all existing pressurized, pressurized water reactors of generation two, I would like to start to show you the original design base. When we started in 1970s, uh, we started with the original design base of Generation 2, and we will see how this original design base became obsolete. Uda Becker already addressed this topic. I will give you a short overview in a slide. And then I, I will switch over uh, to the uh, measures, to the technical measures which have been selected for maybe a, for 14 to 13 reactors. These are the medium-sized reactors, which Georgie addressed. And then uh, uh, to the maybe a thousand reactors and talk about possible or not possible solutions. Well, next slide, please. Yeah, here you can see the design base, the original design base of VBR 1000, no, for, of, of reactors of generation two, of pressurized, for instance, pressurized water reactors. And the safety philosophy we had in the 1970s was to prevent, of course, uh, conditions which might uh, lead to accidents. That means to preserve normal conditions. But this uh, preserving of normal conditions is not always possible. So uh, controls have, technical controls have to be made uh, to avoid such normal conditions. And a special concept is applied in this connection. It is the so-called defense in depth concept. So the concept is clear, but uh, normal operation can, and this has been proved, also change to abnormal conditions. And these abnormal conditions have to be controlled. And if these abnormal conditions cannot be controlled, then the accident condition, the following accident condition, has to be controlled. This was the, the orig original design philosophy, safety philosophy for pressurized water reactors of generation two. And the design based accidents, that means uh, we, we, we thought uh, what, what, what might be the worst case uh, which might happen for such a type of reactor. Uh, and we came up with a hypothetical accident. 
uh, and we thought we thought at this time that this uh, accident might be the maximum credible accident. Yeah? And uh, what does it mean? We we assumed that there should be a hypothetical double-ended guillotine break of the main coolant pipe, which means that the total coolant in the primary cir circuit would spill to the containment and the core will dry out. The reactor core will dry, dry out. That means we assumed a complete loss of coolant of the reactor core. This uh, design base accident, we, we, we had several goals and we, we, we set up measures and installations and, uh, and technical means uh, which prove that even such a design-based accident might happen that no radioactivity of will release to the uh, to to offsite that radio radioactivity will be kept in the within the containment. Yeah, that means shutdown of the chain reaction will be possible in such a design-based accident. That means that control rods will immediately fall into the core or will be injected into, into the core that the chain reaction stops. Then, of course, uh, due to uh, spillage of the total cooling water from the reactor pressure vessel and from the core, Rapid refill and reflood uh, has to occur within the reactor pressure vessel. That means first uh, the lower head had to be filled up with cooling water and then to this cooling water has very rapidly to uh, flood the hot reactor core because you can imagine temperatures in the meantime, in the reactor core, without cooling, immediately start to rise. And uh, it was uh, the goal, the aim, that uh, the temperature cannot rise above uh, about 1,000 degrees C. Why 1,000 why degrees C? At this time, about 1,000 uh, degrees C, uh, the, the cladding of the fuel rods, which is a circuloid cladding, first will balloon, yeah, it will balloon and uh, will heat, heat up more and more. That means uh, it will balloon and will block, ballooning uh, fuel rods will block the sub channels where the coolant should go upwards and cool cool the, the fuel rods and, and the fuel elements. And the ballooning has to be, uh, had to be prohibited in such a design-based uh, case. So a thousand degrees about is the, the limit where the core can rise up, but, but before, before it rises further, the, the coolant, the emergency cooling systems should deliver water to the core and flood the core, completely flood the core, so that the, the, the decay heat, which even after shutting down the, uh, the reaction, that the can, decay heat can be removed from the core and no further heat up can occur. So in such a design based accident, we stated and fixed and all the measures have been taken that the reactor core 
integrity is maintained. What, what does it mean? Fuel rods remain fuel rods, circular fuel rods. The subchannels will exist so that coolant can remove uh, heat from the fuel rods. So that means the complete structure within the core remains uh, so that coolant is really effective in such a situation. That means uh, core integrity was the highest goal uh, for such a design-based accident. And a lot of uh, efforts have been made uh, at this time in setting up test facilities. And I remember when I was with Siemens, we had the PKL test facility, which is still alive, I would say, where we did a lot of experiments to prove that the installed emergency core cooling systems are able to provide the coolant to the reactor pressure vessel and to the core and to refill and reflood the core as soon as possible. And the, uh, these our calculations uh, showed that this process started immediately after blowdown of the of, of the reactor coolant system at about 16 seconds after break. Uh, after this break with loss of coolant. And then within uh, 20, 30, 40 seconds, the core should be filled again. That means should be flooded again so that the heat can uh, be removed in any case. And then we, you, afterwards, after some time, you can uh, switch over to normal uh, uh, situations with cooling the core and uh, of course not uh, that meet, uh, meet, uh, under, under shutdown conditions. Yeah, this was the design base and uh, now to, the, to my next slide, please. Here on this slide you, uh, you see uh, 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 this I summarize all of what has have been said so far, also with Oda Becker and 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 Nicholas Müller. The yellow part, the yellow part in this uh, in this uh, slide in this figure shows the original design base, and the original design base consisted of three levels: level one, normal operation, and uh, and uh, level two abnormal operations and level three accident. And the design base for this accident was the guillotine break of the primary circuit. Under these conditions, if, if any, any CV accident which have happened afterwards would have followed our calculations and tests, I would uh, I, I, I would say then uh, the situation could have been would have been controlled, but things turned out out in another way. Uh, through to the accident, to the coal melt accident in Three Mile Island, then afterwards through the severe accident uh, at Chernobyl, and later on. Uh, the severe accidents with coal melt at Fukushima, they showed the, uh, very clearly that the design-based accident is obsolete for, for uh, reactors, for pressurized water reactors, for all, all these reactors. Additional levels have to be implemented, which, we, which go beyond the design base. And this uh, implementation was necessary because not only single failures and single events uh, can uh, have to be considered uh, in an accident, but multiple failures and common failures 
which go far beyond uh, the situation in, a, in the original design base. And what did these severe accidents uh, also demonstrate? The severe accident 1979 in uh, Three Mile Island and 1986 in Chernobyl and 1911 in, uh, in Fukushima. That off-site uh, uh, off contamination and off-site release of radioactivity cannot be prohibited in, in such cases. So uh, an additional level of five has to be added, uh, which shows that measures have to be taken off-site, but uh, these measures have to be taken by the states, by the states themselves uh, to protect their people and uh, the above measures from one to, to four have to be taken by the operators. So that means Austria has to protect its, uh, its people by measures, even though Austria has no nuclear power plant. Okay, so next slide, please. You have to that come means, to an end uh, yeah, soon. Uh, so we can now just skip this slide one. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the VVR for 4213 uh, tried an approach uh, to deal, to cope with uh, severe accidents. Uh, and the, the concept of in-vessel melt retention already uh, touched uh, this presentation in this presentation, uh, was, was uh, elaborated and implemented. But the errors uh, uh, which you can see here s uh, show the deficits of this, of this uh, approach because the, uh, this in-vessel melt retention measures are implemented, are tried to be implemented after uh, the structures already have been built. And so one, I, I would stress on some of these items. For instance, uh, the water should come from the bubbler condenser, this uh, loc lo localization tower, and go down through this ventilation line to the lower shaft and cool the reactor pressure vessel from outside. But uh, to be to make it possible, a flap has to be opened before, and uh, uh, then the coolant should uh, come up and touch the uh, lower uh, lo lower reactor pressure vessel wall and cool it from outside. But the cross sections that the water can go in and cool from outside, and that the steam which is, is produced can re, be removed from, from these gaps. This is not, uh, not really uh, clear, and it, it's, it, it, they are obstacles which, uh, which uh, come from the design, which is an old design already, and, and uh, this investor melt retention concept was not implemented in it in an original design. These are the problems here. And also, when, when this, uh, when this uh, uh, inbuilt re retention fails, that means that, that, that the reactor wall does not remain you know, within the thickness which it was produced. No, ablation takes place and only a few centimeters should protect uh, the core melt to go down to the to the to the lower shaft, and if, when if this fails, then the a hot core would go into a uh, in the lower shaft filled with water, and we, you would have a strong uh, steam explosion with uh, severe with severe consequences, and uh, opening this door and so on. So that means. The concept looks nice, but uh, the success of this concept is cannot be proved yet. Small test facilities 
tried to, uh, to simulate steady state situations, but transient con uh, conditions have not been, uh, have not been uh, tested in ex experiment. This is with the VVR442-13 reactor. The, the system, the approach is implemented already in uh, the Western VVR reactors in, in, in Czechia, Slovakia, uh, and uh, Hungary. Next slide, please. We really have to come to an end now. Yeah, now, now the, a big problem still exists with, with the VVR 1000. Uh, because uh, there is no possibility uh, to uh, install a core catcher, and also the, uh, there is uh, not yet uh, found and uh, not uh, a possibility to have the approach with core melt retention within the reactor due to the high power of the reactor. So it's still op open and it's still not it decided which, solu which uh, solution will be taken. So I will summarize. Um, at least uh, two type of reactors, you see the problematic situation with uh, generation two reactors. Uh, and I exemplarily tried to show you this problem with the VVR reactors, but they exist for all other uh, pressurized water reactors within the world, how they really can uh, manage severe accident with core melt. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much uh, to uh, Georgi Gestchev and uh, Mary Seidelberger. Um, we have only a couple of minutes left for question and answers, um, but we also don't have so many questions at, in the chat. Um, the first question I want to raise is, um, and I think that was for Ilse, um, but also maybe for Oda um, could answer, I don't know, either of you, isn't imposing clear, um, I think that's key performance indicator, KPIs, um, such as core damage frequency, allowable dose connected to return periods or failure frequencies, a clear safety measure of existing nuclear power plants. Um, could, could you... Uh, comment i think the question is uh, meant as uh, even if uh, you know you have aging problems is, is are those key um, performance indicators not um, sufficient uh, you know to to guarantee safety in the future as far as i understand the question in that way Oda or Ilse? No, uh, both. Sorry, Ilse is not. Uh, Wolfgang is uh, giving the 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 Q and A. Um, okay. Wer fängt jetzt an? Oda. Also ich. Uh, sorry. Um, as I understand the question, how you explain before I didn't understand. Sorry. Uh, is it enough to uh, have core damage frequency? So. Everybody who is a little familiar with this uh, probability uh, issue knows this is not the real probability. This only indicates where are the most important uh, weaknesses of the plant. And also in this um, probability calculations, not everything is included. So they not could be they should not be changed with the probability of an accident. This nobody can calculate it. Just the reality says the experience with the accidents we have already. I hope the question is answered. Okay, 
and now I will uh, shift over to Wolfgang. You have to unmute yourself, and I have a follow up for you as well after that. But you have to unmute you. We don't hear you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the the concept, the concept of fracture mechanics, is is something which is a precondition for fatigue. We, it is it is not dependent so much on statistical approach. The the uh, k k one is is a stress intensity factor. This uh, depends on the crack mechanism. And uh, and this converts it to K1, K2, K3, and in Ilse's in Ilse's picture, uh, where we have seen the the uh, let me can you pull up the Ilse's picture number? I think it was number seven. I I don't think that's. Can you explain it in words? Because it yeah, will take too long. Yeah, I will, I will pick it up, my own picture. There is a, there's the initial, initial curve on the left, was on the left side, which, uh, which is shifting to the to the right side and and uh, should be well above the PTS main path we could say and uh, and you see and on the left corner there was a number of samples indicated this was a typical uh, measurement uh, uh, typical samples to determine the this uh, stress intensity factor this is this is blocks of metals which have a slot and and now you have different modes how to torture how to make a stress on this on these blocks you can tear them apart in this way so that you open the crack and and you you, you have to see when does the crack start to to migrate you can but you can shear also you can shear the the you can make such an approach you can make it squeeze it to the side. And this gives the different modes, K1, K2, and K3. And this stress intensity factor is something which is, which is not very, very easy to, to, to understand, uh, like uh, power, power or like stress is power on, 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 on the area. It has a, it has a, it has a three half and so on, in the dimensions of, of uh, usual mechanical units. Okay. It's better, it's better to understand that this has this factor has always to be above this curve, and <laughs> and and this has to be determined by exper experiments. And uh, it is it's a more or less ab abstract approach for explanation, but uh, it's widely used, and it's it's also. Uh, limited in its validity. It, it's uh, limited to the linear elastic approach. If you, have, if you are not linear elastic, if you, are, if you have different fracture modes, if, if you have plasticity included, then it, 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 it gets difficult. So these this uncertainties are, are in, in a huge number. And you, you have another, another uh, uh, um, uncertainties on on the material can, can, structure can, and so on. Okay. So the, the answer is uh, is no. The the it, it's it's not. What was the question? It it's, isn't imposing clear. K, 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 uh, K, uh, yeah, but KPI means key key performance indicator. I think. But can I ask you a follow-up question on the brittlement issue? Uh, here is uh, somebody asking, according to Konheiser's research, uh, I think that's a researcher in Dresden, um, uh, reactor pressure vessel embrittlement occurs in the whole thickness too 
because nutrient spectrum shifts down to uh, 0.1 to 1 MeV inside the walls. It's more a comment, but maybe you can, uh, I, I, I do not really understand uh, the, the implication of the comment, but uh, maybe you have some insights. Yeah, you, can, you cannot, you, you, as you go with, with a test sample, but you have in a real material, is, is a very complicated. You have a distribution of the, of the damage within the wall. The, the vessel wall is, is, not a, is not a sheet. It's, it's kind of 25 to 30 centimeters thick. And, and uh, the, the radiation starts from inside and, and makes damage depending on the depth, how far uh, can the neutrons go? But what is the diffusion effect? Um, it says it's 300 C and so on. So you have a distribution of your effect and, and to, to get realistic uh, values, K, K1 or K2 or K3 values or a combination of the three is, is pr practically not possible. So it, it, is, it is by far not covered. It just gives some, some indication where it could be, but all, all this kind of tests, also the surveillance samples, which are used. It, it, it is K, K1 samples can be used for surveillance purposes, but also the, the former tests, uh, the, the also have been using, using a hammer and, and, and uh, fracture the, the sample. If this is a tough material, it, takes, it, it, it absorbs more energy. If it's, if it's brittle, it is like, it's like glass. This hammer has not, does not, has not to invest so much work. All of this is, is kind of, of just indications, but this is not a, a, a clear and, and, and say, uh, a very, very reliable uh, measurement. Okay. So we are reaching the end of our session. Um, thank you very much for all the speakers. Thank you very much to the audience uh, <clears throat> for the questions and for being with us. Um, I think we are all going back now to the uh, main uh, room where in uh, short at uh, 4.30, according to my program, we can listen to the closing remarks of uh, Professor Liebert and Bodo Lehmann. Um, thank you very much for being here and uh, we go back. <laughs>